Hello out there in Radio Land. This is Tubal Kane again after a long absence. And today isn't one of my regular videos uh, that's instructional, but rather it is a, a shop tour of my garage foundry. This is not my basement machine shop, but it is my foundry. And the purpose of this video is to uh, review my old equipment here, much of which I'm going to get rid of because I have purchased a job lot of uh, larger and better. Uh, foundry equipment. So just in review as to my old uh, equipment here, uh, you're looking at uh, the molding bench. It's uh, homemade out of particle board or wafer board and I'm going to pitch that here and burn it here in a couple days after I take the sand out of there and the sand is still good. That was homemade and, and uh, I won't miss that. The newer one uh, is going to be much better. And then over there is my muller, and that still works good, but it uh, uh, mulls relatively small batches, so I may dispose of that because I have a much larger one now, although it's 220 volt and it might be uh, uh, inconvenient to use in this garage because I do not have the 220 voltage, I only have 110. This uh, wall shelf that I've got here is going to have to go or I'm going to have to raise it because the lid on the new molding bench will uh, come up against that. This bench was unsatisfactory in that the ladybugs get in there in the fall or those Asian bugs whatever we call them they kind of look like ladybugs. My new uh, molding bench will have a lid on it so I'm kind of excited about that. This Johnson furnace, which is actually a heat treating furnace, is what I have used to melt uh, metal. It is pretty satisfactory, but I have to use a metal homemade crucible, which uh, I have uh, been criticized on because a metal crucible uh, contaminates the metal. This is a pedestal type. I've got it on wheels. It uses natural gas. I do have to put this outside when I use it. Well, I got that wired shut. I think you've seen that in the other videos. This is a uh, gas is the fuel and it uses air. There's a blower. Which is right there. Okay, that shows you pretty much the old equipment and uh, tomorrow, which will actually be on the same video, I'll show you the the new equipment. Okay, it's the next day now, and uh, this is the new or new used uh, <coughs> molders bench, and uh, it's a Mc McEngelvin molders bench. This one isn't too terribly old. This is something like uh, ten years old, and I again I bought this stuff from a school that is not doing this anymore. What I like about this is I, it has a lid on it so I'm going to step around the camera now and uh, open it for you and uh, show you the inside. It opens like such and if you want these uh, front panels come off the other one comes off as well and there's a rack there for the various molding tools, the spoons and uh, rammers and different things that, that you might have. Looks like a pretty pretty nice unit. The shovels are inside So you can shovel right from the front and the flasks can be put on these movable uh, rods. We'd lay a molding board on there and then the flask would go on like that. In just a minute I'm going to fill this with molding sand from the other wooden one I got over there, the homemade one, I'm, I'm going to burn that. There's also, I don't know if it shows up, a bit of a slanted uh, piece of steel there that caused when you break out your, 
castings and the sand falls, it falls toward the back rather than out by your feet. This was probably a very expensive piece of equipment. I don't know exactly what, but I think I'm going to enjoy this. Now it's a little bit longer and a little bit wider than my other one, and it's uh, going to hold more sand. Not that I need much more sand, but I think that's pretty nice. There's also two of these racks, removable racks. I just put one of them on, and I'm not really sure what they're for, but I guess for setting flasks on. Possibly to set uh, the half on that you're not working, but that looks like it might come in handy as well. So much for the molding bench. Here's the little furnace. It's a uh, tilt type furnace. You, you tip it. It does not hold a crucible. It holds the metal directly uh, in the refractory. And uh, uh, there's a name on it made by Kruger or Kroger, something like that. And again, it's gas fired and has a blower on there. Let me step around and tip it. There's a switch and then a rheostat on there also to adjust the speed of the blower. It's a Dayton motor. Not sure I'm going to like this. You know, I'm used to my other one. I've never used this. It came on this old cart here, so uh, we'll see how it goes. There's another view of it. It's pretty much all aluminum except for the uh, fire break. I'm back inside. in the bowels of my garage, so I hope there's enough light here to see this thing. But this is the Speedy Mall sand muller. This is a rather old machine, but I, I hope that it's still serviceable. I haven't run it yet. It is 220 volt, but I think the motor can be rewired for 110 because I don't have 220 out here in the garage. This is a... a a tripod type base so it's right on the floor the sand comes out of this chute here there's a lever that, that drops the door and that's where the sand comes out and you would do that while the thing is running see if you can read the name on here this is also a McEngelvin uh, product Speedy Mall their furnace was called a Speedy Melt, so they used that, uh, that Speedy word in um, several of their products. I think they're still in business, and uh, they made very high-quality products, uh, not cheap. And you find them mainly in schools and in school catalogs. Now the top opens. This muller has a 65-pound capacity. There's a safety switch on there and that uh, it'll go off when you raise the lid. Remember this was designed to go into schools. And we got a nice magnetic starter down there. Motor protection. And the motor is down below too. This will be a nice piece of equipment. A muller again mixes the sand and uh, allows it uh, all of the binders and uh, oil to be redistributed basically on every grain of sand. That's the principle of it. There's a hole in the lid so that you can add oil as the thing is running without opening the lid. Take a closer look at some of the features here. Again, here's the name. And it even uh, tells you how to use it. And then inside there's two steel wheels and this whole thing revolves. Try to turn it a little bit. And then there's a scraper here that scrapes the sand off of the bottom and off the sides. And there's another scraper on the other side, and there you can see the, the uh, hole in the bottom there. I just realized we got a little bit of a bonus here. I got about an extra 25 pounds of sand that's in there. This sand is very expensive. Also with the package deal, we got about seven flasks of various sizes. Some of them are duplicates. The little round one is a homemade one that I made many, many years ago. I'm going to sell the extras because I already have about three or four. And then over here I've got 
three buckets and there's one on the other side too of the Petrobon molding sand. Looks to be fairly new because it still has a little bit of an orange tinge to it. And some strike off bars. I'm breathing hard. I'm moving so much stuff around. And then over here, quite a bit of miscellaneous. I was very glad to get uh, in this container is some of the Petrobon powder or chemical that is the binding agent and it's orange in color. This middle uh, little bucket here is the parting sand which they call non-sill parting and then in the one gallon container here it looks like it's about half full. That's the Petrobond oil. Now I have been using non-detergent 30 weight up till now but that is the genuine product there. Also there were four riddles which are the sieves and there's several different uh, mesh sizes or screen sizes and in there you can see we got some uh, sprue cutters and some spoons and some slicks. I like those tapered sprue cutters. Some of them are kind of beat up. The kids would bang them on the side of the bench to get the sand out of them. And here's another four rammers. Boy, I can really do some serious pounding. One with each hand. Two for my feet, I guess. There's some more spoons. So I've got more foundry supplies here than I can use in three lifetimes. So I have a pretty well equipped foundry now so I'm very pleased I hope that this video didn't seem like I was bragging because if it is in any way I'm taking it off There's nothing I hate worse than a bragger or a boastful person oh I suppose there are things I hate worse like a murderer so uh, that concludes the little walk around shop tour no demonstrations today strictly a shop tour of the various uh, components that I bought. And I, I didn't get these real cheap either. I had to pay pretty good money. I'm going to do a close-up, if I can, of the furnace. That's the maker of the furnace if that shows up. Hope you enjoyed this little video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.